I want you this week in the podcast to think about a creative project that you finished and you feel you achieved something. You got it out the door, it was finished, the world saw it. And you got either good commercial or critical success from it, or indeed learned other lessons. And I want you to take that project and ask yourself the following questions. Because the thing is about when you can review what worked, you can really start to pull out valuable lessons that you can move forward with for new projects. So, hi, uh, this is Marisha Trembatska. This is for my Love Your Creativity and Make Money podcast. We're in the early part of 2021. Lockdown is carrying on. And as always, uh, the environment, the world around is uh, insane. Um, <laughs> with everything that's going on in America, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the truth is, the only thing we can control is what we do and how we think about things. What happens in the world around us can often seem completely out of our control. So this week I am having a look at what lessons we can learn from past projects and then moving it into the new projects for this year. It's just a really good exercise to do and uh, it will give you a feeling of control back, which I think is really important right now as well. So this will be great for your mental health. So the reason I'm inspired to do this is that two days ago, up popped on my Facebook feed the front cover of the brochure of my very first full one-hour singing psychic show. So back in 2015, Tristan Bates Theatre in the West End of London, and it was part of a solo theatre festival. So you can see my face uh, as the singing psychic right above Diana Riggs, which I think is just very cool. (laughs) I think the Diana Riggs back in 2015. And And it's just made me think this week about how much work and effort and joy and blind faith and lessons learned I've had from that singing psychic character. So that's what inspired me to kind of review it for myself because obviously I want to start new projects this year. There's no venues open, there's no theatres open. There is the online stuff, which works, it works, but it feels very different, certainly from someone who loves being on stage live and working live audiences and doing all the improv I do. For me, when I have a script and do a film script, it's a very different energy. It's quite precious, but I just love that live feel. So let's think about a project. Pick a project that you've got. It could be a book you finished and got out the door, a song, a film, a a web series, a short... I mean, I don't really... A painting that you then went and sold, an exhibition. Just think about something you've done in the past. It could be even something related to when you were in a group of people working together. It doesn't need to be a solo project. It would be something that you all worked together on mass. But you had certainly an, an important input into that because this is about your life lessons. So, and how are we defining success as in a successful project? It could be critical success. It could be commercial But as we know, with some artistic projects, we get so much more about that, things that carry through us. We learn things about ourselves and a a certain area of life. I think every time I've ever been an actor in, you know, certainly in a a theatre piece or in a historical film or I've always spent... Or even, yeah, when I've chosen to put a lot of work in the back study of a character, so sometimes not often in, in, say, a very quick short or a commercial, but... I've had the time and the ability to be able to go, let me look at the world around this character I'm playing and the world includes the historical background and everything. You learn so much and that also informs you. But let's pick something that you think, I really learned something there. That was a success. So question one, what worked? What did you do that worked? What, why do you feel it's a success? Write all the things down. So for, I'll take the singing psychic just as an example. Well, um, I didn't just make, I've made and written lots of shows, but with my singing psychic character, if you've not seen it, you can Google her. So she reads the songs in your heart. And yeah, I mean, it's a success in many, many ways, not least the fact the amount of sheer unadulterated joy that I have in doing her and also the, the joy that I know she gives everyone else. My, my very favourite uh, press quote, I think, of my life is, completely bonkers in a good way five stars and that was relating to a a quite an early um, extract of singing psyche as I was developing her but if I look at how why did it work well I had the idea back I think it was 2007 
did did little bits with it. I was I was working on a radio show um, script writing course, and had to do some for homework. Came up with the idea, and then did bits of it over the years. And in fact, twenty fourteen, I spent I did quite a few bits. I spent six hours doing uh, one to one readings as a singing psychic. At that point, she didn't have the accent, she didn't have the wig, but she did understand she could work, walk through a world of music. I always understood that. I mean, and then. And then I finally put it together and I joined a workshop so that every, then I did a 20 minute piece. So therefore I could start, I did a workshop once a week. So I had to turn up and do um, work on my show because when you're self-employed and self-motivated with this work, it can be really hard to get a focus. So I'm aware that me doing a group thing where we all had to turn up and do work towards our show helped. I then... Um, started working with other people and I booked a director to work some stuff through, uh, art director, and then set a deadline for, okay, this festival came up, particularly the first 2015, and I applied and got in. I thought, okay, that's the goal, February 2015. So there was lots of things that made me kind of do the right steps. Now, what else did I do? Well, since then, it's not just one show, is it? I've, I made my first videos of Singing Psychic in the week before 2015, uh, about uh, it was when uh, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey was being released, and I, I was also ha- had been at the Berlin Film Festival where the Fifty Shades premiered. So I made my first video. Now I've had hundreds of videos. I've taught myself to edit and uh, on green screen and shoot, and I've got to put my green screen up now. But I just hate ironing. Um, <laughs> but there's so many questions you can ask yourself: like what worked and what was the extra puts? What did you do press? Well, now Singing Psychic is so incredibly. Gra- branded and looks amazing because of my uh, great friend and also kind of co-conspirator Martin Butterworth so he has done posters for so many uh, art directors as well for so many Hollywood posters and great work it's incredible so I've put a little team together which I'd used before but it really seemed to gel this was not my first time at writing shows and touring them but yeah so write all the things that what worked then what didn't work? What did you find particularly difficult? What It always takes more time than you think. If I think about my Queen of the Fucking World show, that I also deem as a success in a different way. I got so much research because I got funding for it and I did lots of interviews. Me trying to find the arc of the character and the play, the one-hour play, it's a show about sexual politics, is and learning the music I had to and learning the instruments and putting the tech in. There were so many challenges. And even with Singing Psychic, I'm like, well, I want to be able to, at any point in the show, turn around to you and go, um, the audience member, and say, oh, I can hear this song, or let me read your heart. How am I going to do this? What is the tech? And then, of course, I've developed the Singing Psychic game show, um, which, of course, has been to Australia and everywhere. And again, even with that, although the new the character really developed well, there was so much. Even now, I'm going well. I've done the game show version one. What's game show version two looking like for 2021? So I'm, I'm looking at that. There's always technical. What technical problems did you hit? Did you have problems booking venues? How did you sell? Write down things you found really difficult. Uh, third, how how did you finance this project? Was it bootstrap you did a bit a bit and then got a bit of funding from here um you got um, a venue to help you put it on um did you do any merchandising How, think about the ways you funded it or did you fund it to certain levels and then get people involved did you write it to a script level and then get it to somebody maybe a production company who took it on have a think about and think about how many letters you wrote and how much stuff you did for who helped you what network did you bring in so do you have a, a co-conspiracist like I did? Did you book, hire someone to be a director or do some press for you? What, what are the, where did you find people that gave you success? And also what people really, what lessons did you learn from working with some people that, so that's probably five. Lessons you won't repeat about working with people that didn't work for your project. Many years ago, I took it, I was touring, I had a jazz band and I toured with them and I hired someone who seemed a friend of mine, great, um, artist as well oh my god such a nightmare when it came to performance and when all I'm focusing on as a producer artist is getting on stage my other musicians were completely fine but this one was really difficult and I've done certainly some big sellout shows of one-off ideas that maybe I didn't take further than I could have or they were then when it became an Edinburgh show and there's some 
there's some people I've used over and over again, and if I next need them, I know they, they people just you end up with these co-conspirators and network people that you always work with. Often, di- film directors ha- use work the same DOP; they'll have the same producer. Look at um, the amazing Ken Loach. Uh, so his producing partner is Rebecca O'Ryan. I've met both of them. I've been to the. Uh, my friend Martin actually has done the titles for his last sixteen films, uh, so I've kind of met them and. Not that, you know, not that closely, but I've seen them in action. I've certainly been to their films in Cannes and on the premieres. But the two of them have a really good working relationship. And that Paul, I've forgotten his name, who I've met very briefly in passing, is writes the scripts for Ken and develops that as well. So they have a really tight network. It's really common. So think about the networks you can put together. Did you have, question six, I believe, did you have a definition of done? What was, when you started this project, what was the aim? For me, I didn't really have a definition of done for the singing psychic, but I kept developing her, particularly over 2012, 13, 14. But though 2011, I did like a very short little screen thing of her. It was like a monologue exercise. and Someone called in and she picked up the phone. The real definition for Don, though, for me, is I then managed to get into that first 15 festival in February. I always talk about how I don't call deadlines, deadlines, but lifelines. But was there a definition of Don? And did you have a date of that Don? So that's question seven. Did you have a date of your Don as well as a definition? The film will be finished. The song will be released. This is the date. If you didn't, why didn't you? And what worked for you better? Did you just casually hang it out? Marketing. Did you do marketing? What did you do to get it out there? What did you do to get people involved? What did you do to... Did you kind of contact your friends and on Facebook or start doing Twitches? Or what did you do to start building your network and market the message of your successful project? And then lastly, I'd like you to have a look at all of what you've written. Hopefully you've written it down, but maybe you haven't. Um, and... Think about what lessons can you really take from your ruminations just? Because in business, reflecting is such an important part. What went right, what went wrong is really important. We don't do enough of it as artists. And I'm not just talking about because art itself, I use the the wider term of art. When is it finished? You know, you never know when to stop painting. You can spend forever developing ideas But actually, it's about shipping it and getting it out the door. And sometimes we do that because we've got a publishing contract. Sometimes we do it because we've got, oh, can you come and be in the script? I've got this idea. Sometimes it's about, well, oh, there's a a scholarship program, an award program that we need to get the script in by there to be considered. I did a really tiny little two-minute film called When Lightning Strikes last year, 2020 even. (laughs) Because I'd seen in the Instagram in the morning that Roger Corman, the director, had... Don, he was doing a little two-minute film and he'd watched the war um, and it had to be about set in lockdown, done on an iP done only two minutes, filmed on your phone. Now, I was very lucky to have work to do that day. So at 7 o'clock at night, I thought, right, I'm going to make a two-minute film. And you can find it. It's on YouTube, When Lightning Strikes by Marisha Trembetska. I basically, we'd, the day before, my sister and I had, my sister and I had chopped her dog's fur because it's a Maltese and we'd spent hours in the bath. For, unfortunately, I didn't get footage of us in the bath because I didn't think I was making a film. But the next day, that I looked at the dog and it, she looked really oh, so cute. Um, she looked like the two of us had hacked at her. She was completely safe, but we just hacked for her health and safety, get rid of some of the uh, the long dreadlocks she was developing <laughs> from lockdown. And she hadn't had a grooming in a while. So I went out at 7 o'clock at night, took all her the dogs for the walk... Went into the fields. My sister's got horses. Took, took, everyone took, got things. Even wrote a song that day on my guitar. Song is a bit of a stretch. It went um, something like, um, Fluffles, you're so beautiful. Can't you see? It's a really cute little thing. Sound is terrible. I, I literally envisioned it from 7pm at night when I went to bed at 4 in the morning because I had to edit it as well super quickly. And it's, I popped it out. I didn't hear any feedback, but I love that little film. And the dogs look super cute. There's no humans in it, apart from me at the end, um, playing the guitar <laughs> and a few feet. It was deliberately made uh, that way. But anyway, I just loved it. So 
and it inspires me to keep on making it at a time when it's really hard have a go and this is always a podcast you can come back to at any point and have a listen so if you do want to work with me the links are all in my link tree above in my bio and instagram but if you're not listening that way then you can contact my acting agent for acting work if you want to contact me about booking the singing psychic or my and the singing psychic uh, corporate bookings and indeed her game show then contact me directly at, at marisha t on instagram and twitter and i'm also marisha trembetsker on facebook um, or indeed my Queen of the Fucking World show about sexual politics, so fierce. But my nails are really long. You can see I haven't been practising guitar enough, so that's, gonna, that's one of my to-dos for 2021. I'm even a TEDx speaker, madly, and I'm sure I will speak more and more about this kind of creative work that's happening. The book is coming soon. Get your art and gear book. So wherever you are in the world listening to me, you're doing great. It's, it's really hard. You're doing great. Let's just keep on going. Call your friends you're starting to feel super lonely and afraid give someone a call and maybe professional help as well can really help but doing exercises when we remember the good things we've done this is not about us going oh the world was so much better then i was so much more beautiful rich i could gig wherever i wanted none of that please none of that this is about what lessons can you pull out of the experience that you did that worked and sure the synchronicity that happened is important too also think about the synchronicity that happened but think about why did we get synchronicity? And normally the synchronicity, the magic, the luck, comes because of all the work we've done before. Add that bit. Okay, speak to you soon. There is every week on a Sunday, there's my Singing Psychic podcast for the songs of the week ahead. Go and check that out. It's really fun if you haven't listened to it before. And um, equally, I'll be back next Thursday with another Love Your Creativity and Make Money podcast. Thanks. Bye. Bye.